Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Kamish Orr, and welcome back to something I like to call Stories from the Maelstrom, a recap of the day's games for this past week of real time. We start in New York as the Oakland Jacks are facing off against the New York Swats again. Uh, this is, I believe, the second game of a four-game series between these two teams, and actually between any of the teams that I'm going to be talking about today. And in this one, uh, Oakland's trying to trying to stop their slide here. Um, they haven't had haven't been doing too well. Both of these teams are near the bottom in the American League, and Oakland has the upper hand in this one. Uh, Mike Messina facing off against Walter Johnson. Uh, Johnson couldn't keep the ball in the ballpark. Uh, or excuse me, Oakland had a two-run homer in the second by Mickey Cochran. Another two-run homer in the third by George Brett. And then a few innings later in the sixth, another two-run homer by Reggie Jackson. And that was kind of the one that, uh, that really put a nail in the coffin there. Uh, they did score a couple of runs, and York Swats did uh, against Mike Messina, but uh, with a two-run double by Ty Cobb there in the fifth inning and a solo shot by Babe Ruth in the sixth, but um, Oakland was uh, with the, on the backs of those three home runs, uh, continued uh, uh, continued to, win, to score here. Uh, there was another RBI single by Joe DiMaggio there in the seventh, scoring Robin Yount, who led off at the triple. And then they'd even score in the ninth against Early Wynn, who was coming in in relief there, with another RBI double by George Brett, uh, scoring Hank Greenberg. So all in all, Oakland takes this one 8-5. to five. Uh, We can see here that the only Oakland player without a hit was Rod Carew, their leadoff man, um, which is kind of surprising because he's one of the top hitters on the team. But uh, Robin Yount, 3-5. for five. A couple of players with two hits. George Brett and Joe DiMaggio had two hits apiece. And uh, Mike Messina picks up his sixth win. He's 6-1 and one now on the season. Uh, Mariano Rivera picked up his fifth save with a, uh, a scoreless inning of relief work there. And uh, and Oakland wins this one to uh, fight off New York, who, uh, if it had New York won, would have uh, tied them um, in the American League. Instead, Oakland improves to 15 and 18, and New York falls to 14 and 20, becoming the first American League team with 20 losses. Heading over to St. Louis, where the Wizards were, an, are another team who have had a, a rough go of it lately. Uh, St. Louis Wizards are in first place in the National League uh, and had been by a wide margin, but that margin has been shrinking here in the last uh, the last few games, as St. Louis just can't seem to uh, continue their winning ways that they started earlier in the season. And this one at first looked like it was going to be more of the same. Houston actually is um, one of the worst teams in the National League at a 14 and 19 record coming into this game. And uh, Hank Aaron hit a two-run homer in the third off Carl Hubble, which, um, meanwhile, Phil Necro was keeping them scoreless up to that point. And so Wizards fans were, weren't were very happy at this point. It looked like it was going to be more of the same um, and that they were going to struggle to win and maybe even lose this one. But the St. Louis Bats finally woke up uh, ignited by Stan Musial's three-run homer in the fifth off Phil Necro. Uh, Necro would allow a solo shot to Ted Simmons in the sixth to put the Wizards up four to two. Uh, Hubble pitched eight strong innings of work there, um, struck out six, only walked two, and uh, he pretty much kept them, other than that two-run homer by Hank Aaron, kept the uh, Hoots scoreless the rest of the way through the eighth. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Dizzy Dean came in the eighth inning, um, the bottom of the eighth, and the Wizards uh, feasted on him for four more runs. Uh, Tim Raines had an RBI single, Oscar Charleston followed by a triple that cleared the bases, scoring two, and then Chipper Jones uh, had an RBI single to follow that. So they scored four more runs to really widen the lead there 
um, and give themselves an 8-2 victory. Fergie Jenkins with the perfect inning of relief work there in the ninth. And Carl Hubble picks up his sixth win, uh, so he's 6-0. Oh. So he's yet to lose a game. Uh, looked again, it looked a little shaky there in the beginning with that two-run homer, but uh, he managed to turn things around and uh, pitch well the rest of the game. So St. Louis uh, wins this one. They improved to 23-11 and to add a half a game, um, get, a, get a half a game over L.A., who has been on a hot streak uh, in the National League. Um, L.A. now, after this game, was three and a half games back. Um, and then Houston, of course, falls to 14 and 20. Heading to Detroit, where the Boston Splinters face off against the Detroit Rockets. And uh, both of these teams uh, near the top in the American League. Um, Detroit's had a little bit of the upper hand, and that actually continues. Uh, Catfish Hunter facing off against Frank Tanana. And uh, Catfish Hunter had a rough start, allowing eight earned runs in five and a third inning. We can see here uh, Detroit got their scoring going in the bottom of the first um, after an error by Brooks Robinson there. Um, A-Rod hit a grounder that scored Kenny Lofton. And then they scored in the third all as well. Two more runs in the third there. Uh, an RBI double by Ichiro, which, by the way, that double extended his hitting streak to 21 games. He was three for five in this one. Uh, and then Dick Allen had an RBI single as well in that inning. Uh, Boston got one back in the fourth um, after an error by Dick Allen there. Um, extended that... Uh, Extended that inning, and um, so there was an, one, an unearned run there in the fourth. But then uh, Detroit got got that right back, and then some. When Kenny Lofton hit a three-run shot in the fourth inning to make it six to one, they'd add two more in the fifth. Um, RBIs by Bobby Veach and Bill Freehand there in the fifth, and. Um, Catfish Hunter comes out, came out in the sixth there, and as soon as Ichiro uh, singled, uh, he was pulled for red roughing. Uh, roughing actually held the uh, Rockets scoreless the rest of the way, but by that time, the game was pretty much out of hand, 8-1. to one. Um, They did score a couple of runs. Uh, Brooks Robinson had a two-run shot in the eighth um, against Tanana, but that was all they would get. Um... He, uh, Tanana was, had eight innings pitched. He only allowed two earned runs on four hits only, struck out eight. And uh, Urban Shocker had another uh, scoreless inning in the ninth. Red Ruffing actually uh, held the uh, Rockets hitless in his two and two-thirds innings of work. Uh, he did walk a batter, but Detroit takes this one eight to three, uh, holding the splinters to just five hits. Detroit becomes the first American League team with 20 wins. They improved to 20 and 14 and extend their lead over the Boston Splinters. Uh, more amazing, if we look at the Detroit lineup here, we can see that Lou Whitaker is the only hitter in their in their lineup for this game, at least, batting less than 300. Just incredible. Their offense is quite something to behold. Finally, we head over to Chicago as the red-hot Los Angeles Dynamos come to face the Chicago Docks. And the Dynamos continue their hotness. Uh, they score a run. Um, I should say Greg Maddox was pitching for the Dynamos against Oral Hershiser for the Chicago Docks. Uh, Chicago with the worst record in the entire Maelstrom. And facing off against uh, one of the hottest teams, if not the hottest team in the Los Angeles Dynamos. L.A. scored a run there in the first, um, and then they scored three more in the second. Again, uh, there was an error there by Pujol, Albert Pujols, uh, but Ernie Lombardi led off that inning with a single. Barry Larkin followed with an RBI triple, and then scored on that error um, by Pujols there in the second inning. 
Uh, Cristobal Torriente had an RBI double uh, to make it four to, four to nothing at that point. However, uh, Greg Maddox would allow three runs, uh, allow Chicago to get three runs back in the second inning with an RBI single from Willie Davis and uh, Buster Posey had, had uh, a single that for two RBI there in the second as well. That cut the lead to four to three. And that's where things stood. Um, there in the fifth inning with two outs, uh, there was a scary situation when Troy Tulowitzki lined one right back at Greg Maddox, right off of his leg. And um, Maddox uh, was unable to stay in this game. He's expected to miss probably uh, a week or two um, after, after taking a direct hit there on the leg. And um, fortunately, Tom Glavin came in in relief and uh, struck out the first three batters he faced. Uh, he went two and a third inning, only allowing one hit to, um, to keep Chicago uh, kind of in check. Meanwhile, uh, uh, L.A. scored two more runs in the top of the sixth, thanks to, thanks to Frank Robinson's two-run homer off of Oral Hershiser. Uh, overall, Hershiser would go six innings, allow five earned runs. He did strike out five, but he will pick up the loss in this game. Uh, both relievers uh, allowed a run there in the eighth. Uh, there's an RBI double for Joe Morgan in the top of the eighth against uh, Jim Jeffries. And then in the bottom of the eighth against uh, Jim Bunning, Chicago would score a run. Uh, Bobby Bonds had an RBI single there, scoring Troy Tulowitzki there in the eighth. Um, Goose Gossage came in in the ninth with the score seven to four and struck out the side, including Sammy Sosa, who had come in to pinch hit. Um, and that improved at Gossage's ERA to .87. Uh, he picks up his seventh save. Tom Glavin gets the win in this one. He's uh, improves to two and zero. Oh. His ERA is a one oh four. Um, mostly, uh, actually, all of that's in relief. Uh, meanwhile, also noteworthy is Kent Colby there for for the Chicago Docks. Pitched a scoreless uh, ninth. Um, his ERA drops to point sixty. So, um, but overall, LA continues their winning ways. They're twenty and fourteen, and Chicago falls to eleven and twenty three with this loss. So if we take a look at the standings, we can see that Detroit has won five straight games um, to open up a one and a half game lead over Boston in the American League. Uh, they've won eight of their last 10 and um, have overtaken Boston for that first place spot. Meanwhile, in the National League, LA is having the same kind of success. They've won five straight and eight of their last 10 as well. Uh, though St. Louis did win uh, to break their losing streak, uh, L.A. was able to cut their their uh, lead to just three games there in the National League. Still plenty of time to make that up if they can continue winning that way. Since it's been a little bit, I thought we would also take a look at the some of the stats. So... <clears throat> I haven't really taken a look at the stats too uh, too recently, I don't think. So if we take a look at the league leaders, uh, we'll take a look at the overall batting leaders. And we can see that Ted Williams is still uh, leading uh, most offensive categories. He has the best average in the entire Maelstrom at 405, the 405 average there. Uh, though Ichiro, with his in the midst of his 21-game winning streak, is right behind him with 372 average. Top of the National League, Tony Gwynn with the 357 average. But again, Ted Williams leading in batting average, in slugging, and on base percentage. The only player with an on base percentage over 500. Uh, Alex Rodriguez, though, um, is right there with him. Ted Williams leading the entire Maelstrom in, in homers with 11. Alex Rodriguez is Stan Musil right behind him with 10. Uh, A-Rod -A has uh, the lead in RBI with 40, and also total bases if we look. Um, so he's uh, he's been been doing some damage there uh, of his own in the uh, Detroit Rockets lineup. 
if we take a look at the pitching leaders, head over there to the pitching side, we can see that leading ERA is Tom Seaver, uh, 218. Sandy Koufax is right behind him with 219 ERA. Uh, several player, uh, several pitchers have six wins. Four pitchers do. Uh, Nolan Ryan leading the league in strikeouts with just one more than Dwight Gooden, though. Uh, Bruce Suter leading in saves. Um, not too surprising considering he's on the St. Louis Wizards. Um, but with their recent losing streak, it's given some other uh, closers time to catch up. Uh, Jerry Kuzman, the only pitcher with six losses. Uh, he's had a rough run of it. And if we take a look at um, the whip here, we see Pedro Martinez leading with .865. Uh, pretty good. Sandy Koufax has eight quality starts, which is uh, leading the entire maelstrom. So very interesting stuff here. Um, as always, if you ever want to check out the uh, what's going on in the maelstrom, you can head over to baseballmaelstrom.com to check out all the action, see all of the league stats. You can see the upcoming games, the, the schedule, and recaps of each game as I play them. I average about four games a week, uh, a real week, which means I get through a day of the league every real week, roughly. Um, we are past the All-Star break at this point. I'm playing a third of a season. Uh, so 54 games. And so uh, most teams have played 34. So most teams have about 20 games to go. Still plenty of time for uh, some of these, um, some of the standings to shake out a little bit. Nobody's entirely out of it, though. Chicago at 12 games back would have a rough time making that up in the 20 games they have remaining to play. But who knows? Anything's possible. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Feel free to uh, leave a comment if uh, you have any questions on anything I can answer. As, as everybody says, feel free to like the video. Consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. I upload one of these, oh, about once a week. I also have another series where I delve into some of the uh, statistics or should say the, the out distribution and that kind of thing uh, using real 2022 Major League Baseball st uh, stats. Uh, the play-by-play -play data from RetroSheet. So check out that series if you're interested. I'm going to have another video coming up that's going to go over uh, what happens in bases loaded situations. So um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. And that's where we'll leave things. Thanks so much for coming by and watching. And until next time, have a great evening.